What's up everybody, Phantom Darkness 135 here with you today with a very special video that I think you're going to love. I know that my loyal viewers and fans are absolutely going to love this. The great minds at DrFu.com, who are behind the Amnesia series that we played several months ago, have created a Room Escape Maker, or REM, and it's exactly as awesome as it sounds. It's a free, fun, and simple program to create your own Room Escape game. And today, I'm going to walk you through, have you mastered the basics of it, I'm going to show you some problems you can run into and how to work around those. And with your guys' help, we can turn this beta into something really cool. It's really the first of its kind. It's like something out of my dreams. And uh, I think it's really awesome already. And with your guys' help, I think we can make this really, really good. A couple of things before we get started. Number one, I'm not going to force you to, but I highly recommend that you play the game I already published. It's at drfoo.com slash games slash room dash escape dash maker slash phantom darkness 135 lots of slashing and dashing but i'll put that link in the description for this video and there are two reasons i'd like you to play that first number one it'll help familiarize yourself with the objects we'll be using and what the end product of the game will look like and number two i'll probably have some spoilers in this tutorial that'll give away some secrets of my game so go ahead pause me i'll stay right here i won't even buffer because youtube won't let me and then play that game you don't have to beat it just play it familiarize yourself come on back and let's have some fun. I'm hoping that you guys will build your own games and maybe one day I can do a walkthrough of one of your games. I think that'd be really cool. So the first screen you see here, you can create an account totally free. They won't send you junk email or anything. I already have one, so let's load that. With one account, you can build up to three games, which is really awesome. You can see my first one there. We'll just call this one Phantom Tutorial. Now once you put that URL in, the title you can edit, but once the URL is in, you cannot edit it later, so make sure it's something you like a lot. The only way you can edit it later is if you completely scrap the game. So make sure you like it, create the game, and we get a nice little template. Before we get to the settings or any objects, let's take a look at the menus up here. The first is the game manager. Basic stuff, URL, the title. We'll put a small description here. This will show up at the beginning of your game. And from this menu, you can save your game, preview, or play it. And then once you're done previewing it many times as you'd like, get all the bugs out, you can send it in for review to the Dr. Foo team, and they will publish it if it's appropriate. And once you send it in, you cannot edit it any further, so make sure it's completely done when you do send it in. Next menu, the What's New, will show you any updates that have been made to the REM. Help menu, very, very important in this beta stage especially. There are two big things you can do to help out the developers. Number one, which benefits both you and the developer, is you can send in your own pictures to use as objects, which is really cool. Number two, bug reporting. Whether it's you or you send this to your gaming friends and share it with them, and you come across a legitimate bug, you definitely need to report it so that the programmers can fix it. Today we're going to show you some problems that you can run into that aren't necessarily bugs, but stuff you need to think about and work around. All right, that's all the menus. Let's get started on the fun stuff here. Let's decorate our room a little bit. Now this checkbox right here, this will change whether the player's cursor will turn into a hand when they can interact with something. I'm gonna leave that on for this. Let me drag this menu down so you can see it. I guess we'll make the walls like a blue and then maybe a green for the floor there. That looks nice. And we'll start out with the door. They give you a door right off the bat, but we don't need to use it. We can delete it if we want to. I'm gonna leave it there though. The biggest thing I think you need to understand in using the REM is working backwards to front. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, say we have a safe here. This is an open safe image. Let's put a piece of paper in the safe that when the player clicks on it, it will show a message and it will open a closet that was previously unopenable by the player. Now, if we rush ahead and put the safe closed on there, and maybe we put a plank or something over it to have the player have to do some work before they get to the safe and then we later discover that oh we forgot to program the piece of paper we're gonna need to move all this away or delete it altogether and we don't want to do that now granted you do have commands down here under the item menu to bring something forward or send it backwards so say I wanted to send this piece of paper behind the image of the open safe I could do that however it's much 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 easier if you think from the start in terms of working backwards to front so let's take a look at what we can do with our objects. With this piece of paper, we have item main settings, on click, and on click holding another item. 
since we want it to do something when the player just clicks it without anything else in their hand. You have six options, including doing nothing. You can ask for a code from the player. You can give a code to the player. You can show a predetermined message. You can change the inventory by adding something to the player's inventory. Or you can end the game altogether. For this one, I'm just going to give them a little note. When you think of codes in escape games, they're usually the open, a safe, or a box or something. But in this case, I'm just using it to tell the player that once they click on this, something has happened to the closet that they need to check out. Now you could be a scumbag and put some profanity in here, but keep in mind that there are hardworking fellas making sure that these games stay family friendly, so please refrain from doing that. Don't be a scumbag, Steve. Now we'll move over here and build our closet, because we can't do anything else until we do that. So we have a pre-rendered closet image. We'll put right there. Let's put a crowbar in there. And we want to make sure we program the crowbar before we put any doors on, or otherwise we'll have some overlapping problems. So when you click on the crowbar, we want the player to add it to their inventory. So let's see, on click, change inventory, add this, it does it for you. Now let's save it here and do some testing real fast. We're going to go to preview and play our own game. we get the camera ready for you guys. So you see the title and the description there. Let's move over to the closet. If you don't hide the crowbar after you add it to their inventory, the player can add as many crowbars as they want to their inventory. Not good. So let's fix that. We'll fix it so that the crowbar will change the inventory to add this, and it will also hide this, this being the crowbar, so that it disappears when the player picks it up. Now, we want the closet to be locked and unable to be interacted with until the player clicks on that piece of paper in the safe. So what we'll do is we'll put a dummy layer over the closet and then we'll put a second layer of doors over that and the second layer we're going to go to the menu. Let me straighten that out. We're going to go to the menu and make them invisible at first until some other event triggers them. So make them both invisible, and when they are clicked on, we need some open doors. So here's an image of an open closet door on the left, one for on the right. And what we want to do is make it so that when the player clicks on this door, it will show the open closet door and hide the closed closet door, which is this. We want to do the same on the other side. Show the closet open door on the right side, which is 2-1, and hide this. Oops. And just for more realism, you don't have to do this, but let's make it so that when the player clicks on the open doors, it will show the closed doors. So we want to make these invisible too. Make sure you have that checked. And when you click on them, we're going to show the closet door. Make sure you have the second set of closet doors that are interacted with, the one, two. And then we'll hide this. Same thing on the right side. We're going to make it invisible. Show the second closet door. Hide this, and that way the player can open and close the doors as they wish. Now that we have a closet, we can get back to programming our piece of paper. We already have it giving the code closet, so all you need to do is show the second set of doors that can be interacted with, so the 1, 2, and the 2, 2, and then hide the first set of doors, the closet door 1, 1, and the closet door 2, 1. So at this point, let's save and preview and make sure we did everything right. If not, we'll go back and fix any bugs we might have. So, we shouldn't be able to open the closet at all right now. So if we click on it, it does nothing. That's very good. When we click on the note, it says there's something here, closet. Now we should be able to open it, and we can. We can pick up the crowbar, and it disappears. And we can open and shut the doors as we please. Very, very good. So far, we have a functional game. But we still need to make it very interesting. So let's add a cover to the safe. We need to go back to room settings drag it over and we'll have the safe on click ask for the code we'll just make it one two three for simplicity's sake and time sake one we add as many as we want well not as many as you want you do have a limit on the amount of numbers you can have in the ask or give code for right now so we'll ask for the code one two three and then if the code is correct we want to hide the safe closed image so we'll do that hide this now we'll put a couple of planks. First of all, let me have a horizontal plank. I'm going to do something with that in a second. Let's put two vertical planks over the safe. Make the player work for the safe. 
and then we'll add another one. There we go. And we'll add some nails in there that we'll use. Uh, how about some screws, actually? We'll use a screwdriver to open the safe. So let's put another screw in there. Here's one problem you can run into. We'll use nails for this example down here. If you have a plank with, say, two nails on it, one there and one there on the other side, and say you want it to fall off only when the player removes both nails. What we can do is on click with an object, so the, holding the crowbar, we want to, let's see, we want to hide this, the nail, and then for this one, holding the crowbar, we want to hide this and we want the plank to fall off, so we want to hide the plank, which is 1-1. One, one. And we need to get access to the crowbar, so we'll add another piece of paper that will let us open the closet. Just for a second. On click, we'll show closet door 1-2 two, and 2-2 two, two, and hide the first set. All right. So we'll save this and preview real fast. The problem with doing it this way is, let's get our crowbar first. So we click on that paper. Oops and get the crowbar. We can use it on the nail and it will work fine, but there's nothing stopping the player from starting with the right nail and at that point, since the game or the maker cannot detect whether all the nails are gone, even if this nail is still there and the player does the right nail, the plank will still fall off. So we don't want that. One way to fix that is by setting the nail to be visible and showing the second nail only when the first nail is removed. So we'll hide this nail when the crowbar is used. Oops, I'm on do nothing or uh, on click. So I want to be on on click with holding another item. We want to hide this and show the second nail. And then we'll hide the nail, the second nail, at first. So let's save that and try that out. I'll scroll down so you can see. So we'll click our paper see there's only one nail there and we use the crowbar and the other nail will only appear when that one's done so then you can use it that way so that's one way of getting around since we have two planks here we don't really have to deal with that problem but in case you do have that problem i wanted to show you just to make sure you knew what to do so we can delete all this stuff and stick with the screws that we have now we need a screwdriver for the player to find so let's make that interesting let's put a vase down here. We'll put it right by the door right here and we'll make a knife. Let's see, knife right here. We'll have that hidden until the player breaks the vase by clicking on it. So make that knife invisible and on click we want to add it to the player's inventory and hide the picture of the knife so that they can't pick it up ad infinitum. So we need the vase on click to show the knife and disappear by itself. So we'll do that. And let's add an armchair. So here's an armchair. And we'll put the screwdriver in the armchair. And the only way to get to it is by using the knife on the armchair. So we'll put a regular cushion down at first. Hidden above that cushion will be a second cushion that's ripped open. We'll set that invisible at first. And when you click on it with the knife, it will show, we need to put the screwdriver there first. So let's see, here's our screwdriver. We'll put that below the chair like it fell out of the chair. So now we need to program the open chair cushion to be make sure it's invisible. And when you click on it with the knife, it will show the screwdriver down here. There's one more thing we need to do though. If we just leave it at that, Let's make sure the screwdriver is all ready to go. The screwdriver must be invisible. And when we click it, we want to add it to our inventory. And we want to hide the screwdriver after we add it to our inventory, this. So let's save it right there. We'll just leave it at that in preview and see if we have any problems. So we'll play, break the vase, get the knife, use it on the chair. Oops, did I forget to program the chair? I think I did. Ah, I know why. 
because we're not supposed to use the knife on that chair, we need to use it on this one. So it's on this one, we need to use the knife, and then we'll show the open armchair cushion. My fault. We want the open armchair cushion to only react on click. We want it to do nothing on this part. We want to unclick to show the screwdriver, and we'll leave it at that. All right, let's try that out. You just have to be very careful and make sure you debug very thoroughly before you publish this game. So we use that on the chair. There we go. It opens up. We click on it. The screwdriver comes there. However, the player can click on it as many times as they want, and screwdrivers will keep piling out. So we need to fix that. What we need to do is create a second open chair cushion that does nothing when you click on it. So let's find that. And we'll put that, let's see, that's one, two. So on click, it will do absolutely nothing. We need to adjust the first cushion to hide itself and show the second chair cushion. So that should make it so that it will stop spitting out screwdrivers as soon as the players picked up the first screwdriver. Let's try it out. Make the camera just right. We'll smash the vase, get our knife. Oops, except I forgot to make the cushion invisible at first. Let's try that again. Very, very careful, ladies and gentlemen. We'll play it. So we'll smash that, get the knife, cut it open, spits out the screwdriver, and now the player can no longer click it, which is exactly what we want. Now that we have a way to get the screwdriver to the player, we can adjust the screws so that when they're hit with the screwdriver, let's see, screwdriver, they will hide themselves and they will hide the plank that's attached to them. So I think this is the wooden plank to one. Same thing on the other side. Screwdriver, hide itself and hide the plank. Da, 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 da. One plank two two. All right, and that should work so that our players can get to the safe, and that way they can get to the piece of paper that opens the closet, which will allow them to get the crowbar. So we use the knife, get the screwdriver, use it on the planks. There we go, that works. We give it one, two, three, and the safe opens. Very, very good. That's what we want so far. Now um, let's make things interesting. We can also set our custom messages. So say the player clicks on this door. Just to show you how this works, you can show a message like the door is locked. You can't do that, sir. There's nothing interesting or you need a key to open that. So let's put you need to do something first to let the player know. And we'll have it so that the only thing that will open the escape door is clicking on it with the crowbar. So they have to find the crowbar first. And then when they do that, it'll end the game. And we've already made it very hard for them to find the crowbar. So we should now have a functional and finished game ready to go. Let's preview it. Should be bug free at this point. We'll play, we smash the vase, we get the knife. I feel like I'm doing a walkthrough of my own game. We do the screwdriver, can't click on it anymore. Can't click on the closet because it's not unlocked yet. We use the screws on the planks. We give the safe one, two, and three. We try that out. The paper tells us something happened to the closet. We try that out. We get the crowbar, and we are home free. That's a screen that your players will see when they finished. So that, my friends, is the Room Escape Maker. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments you have in the comments section or PM me. I will answer as many as I can, but you're also better off contacting roomescapemaker at drfoo.com. And I want to thank them for letting me do this tutorial and for creating such an awesome maker. With your guys' help, I think we can make this into something awesome. I look forward to seeing my fans make their own games. Maybe I can do some walkthrough of your own games. I really think this can develop into something really cool if we work at it together. So share it with all your gaming friends. And to my loyal viewers and fans, I will see you soon for more gaming. To the rest of you, I hope this tutorial helped you out. 
and I look forward to seeing the rooms that you guys make. I am Fan of Darkness 135. This was DrFu.com's Room Escape Maker, and I am out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody.